right, so uh, welcome, uh, welcome again, and we're going to keep on covering, um, covering ground in the topic of physical properties of sound from the seventh lecture on the fourth week, and always give credit where credit is due to the Department of uh, Biophysics and Cell Biology at the University of Debrecen. This is their address. What I used uh, from uh, their resources, I snatched off the definition of sound intensity from their minimal requirement questions for biophysics article, which I find to be very, very useful. And uh, just so we take a nice quick peek, this is their website. And this, uh, they have some uh, interesting material there if you're, uh, if you're interested in biophysics and cell biology. So what we're going to cover is the speed of sound, how it relates to the medium, what is acoustic impedance, what is the intensity of sound, and uh, the attenuation. We're going to focus on scattering and absorption. The reflection and, refra uh, reflection and refraction are very, very important uh, aspects of attenuation, and we're going to cover them on the next video. So let's get started. The speed of sound, and we know that it's denoted, denoted by lowercase c, not to be confused with the speed of light. Those are two, uh, two somewhat different speeds. And we also uh, already no learned that the speed of sound can be resolved as a function of the frequency and the wavelength. Very good. Now, what we, what we need to know is that the, uh, the medium affects the speed of sound. So we can say that the speed of sound is, is affected by the medium. We have two main properties of the medium that may affect the speed of sound, and that's compressibility, or rather, let's start with density. Density is easier to understand, density. Density denoted by a lowercase p. And uh, density is basically how dense is, how dense is the material. And it just so happens, when the material is more dense, it slows down the, uh, the speed of, uh, of sound more. And it makes sense. It's just like uh, slowing down the speed of light as well. Light also slows down when encountering denser materials. So I can say when density density goes up, speed of sound, speed of sound goes down. And I like to draw it like this because it, it kinda helps me helps me really relate to the relationship instead of writing a whole sentence saying the speed of sound goes down, the density goes up, blah blah blah. So basically let's take a look at another concept and that's compressibility. I already mentioned that. Compressibility ability denoted by a lowercase k. And that is basically how compressible is a given material. We know that uh, liquids, liquids are non-compressible and gases are highly compressible. You can compress, you can compress uh, a balloon of air, uh, you can say, but you can't really compress um, uh, water. You can't really compress water in a container. It's not really going to be very possible. So the higher the compressibility, The higher the compressibility, again, just like here, the speed of sound would decrease. Speed of sound goes down. So these two things, you can say, inversely affect the speed of sound uh, while it's traveling through the uh, given medium with these properties. So it's given by the following equation, following relationship equation. I'm just going to switch to the lower case. C. There we go. One over uh, the square root of uh, density times compressibility. That means that when any of these measures go up, the speed of sound would decrease in the uh, respective medium. And now what I want to do is I want to take these two formulas, these two formulas, and I want to draw a conclusion, this formula, I want to draw a conclusion about the wavelength. This is important in case they ask you or it's brought up in a true or false or relation analysis question. We know that the uh, wavelength is dependent on the speed of sound. And we know that the speed of sound is dependent on the medium. So we can conclude, draw a conclusion that the wavelength is dependent on the medium property. So the leg wavelength is dependent, dependent on the medium's properties. Not writing the whole sentence. Obviously, this is not the uh, best syntax for an English sentence. But basically, the wavelength depends on the medium, uh, or is dependent on the uh, medium properties. Okay. I'm not going to complete my whole sentences because you can just hear me very well. So this is the speed of sound with respect to the medium it propagates through, and these properties that the medium possesses. 
we're going to talk a little bit about another property that the medium possesses, and this is acoustic impedance. And you can think of acoustic impedance, it's denoted by an uppercase Z. Acoustic impedance is the, I say, the resistance, the resistance of a medium to bringing its particles, bringing its particles into motion. And when I'm saying uh, bringing its particles into motion, I don't mean bringing its particles to moving around inside inside the medium. I mean to bringing its its particles to vibrate and oscillate as they would under the effect of uh, of sound wave propagates through. So basically, if I have uh, this material here and this material here, with and this material has an acoustic impedance of uh, a specific, let's just say uh, x. And this has a 2x, right? This is one material, this is two. We can't really use the same variables here. So what I do is, let's say 100 units, and this would have 200 units. This acoustic impedance of this material here would uh, an adversely affect the speed of sound going through it, or the ability of sound to bring its particles into motion. And we also said that compressibility and density have a great deal to do with it. But also, acoustic impedance has something to do with it. And uh, we're going to get to the units of acoustic impedance. You can see this table I snatched off of Wikipedia. I snatched this table off of Wikipedia, and it's going to help us understand a little bit about acoustic impedance. And we can see the units here. They're depicted as Newton seconds per meter uh, to the power of negative 3. doesn't have to be, but that's what they, uh, that's what they use here. And uh, what I really want to, what I really want to convey here, uh, that we have the temperature, the speed of sound, the density of air, and the acoustic impedance, and this all pertains to air. What I see here is that for this given, for this given um, uh, material, air, this given material, if I have acoustic impedance that goes up, this acoustic impedance goes up from say 103 to 40, uh, 440. The speed, the speed, would decrease. The speed would decrease from 351 to 323. This just means that the acoustic impetus interferes more with the propagation of the of sound in this given material. But what's important to understand is again, if I'm taking materials x and y, and I'm taking acoustic impetus of let's say uh, 100 of of these uh, newton seconds meter to the negative three units, let's say 100. And Y would have 200 of acoustic impedance. That doesn't mean that doesn't necessarily mean that the speed of sound of Y. It doesn't necessarily mean that the speed of sound of Y is going to be smaller than the speed of sound in X. It doesn't mean that. It just means that the acoustic impedance is going to uh, affect the uh, the propagation of the sound wave more. And if you didn't fully understand what I'm saying here, I'm just going to bounce off to a, a website here. There it is. And we have the uh, mercury at 25 degrees. It has the acoustic impedance. This is the acoustic impedance. And I believe it's in the same unit as the one that we were working with, Newton seconds per meter to the, negative, uh, to the power negative 3. This is the acoustic impedance from mercury. And this is its speed in meters per second, uh, speed of, uh, of sound in mercury. And we see under it uh, baby oil that has a lower acoustic impedance, but almost virtually the same speed. And this doesn't mean, the acoustic impedance, all it means is how much does this material have a resistance to, uh, to the sound wave propagating through it. I, I don't believe that you're going to have to do any calculations. I haven't encountered, at least in our biophysics course, any calculations that are required uh, to resolve acoustic impedance. But you do need to know the formula. The formula is pretty straightforward. What it says is resolving the acoustic impedance is possible if you have the, um, if you have the density and compressibility of the of the medium in question. So this is basically how we resolve acoustic impedance. To be honest, I don't remember it ever being asked about or to calculate. Again, the focus of the basic biophysics course, at least in Deberton, is the understanding and the explanation and interpretation of uh, different phenomena rather than sitting in the calculator and punching things uh, punching things in and writing things out. So this is basically acoustic impedance. It is a property of the medium, property of the medium, of the medium, of many properties that affect 
how, uh, how sound waves uh, go through it. So this is acoustic impedance. So we're going to keep on trucking and get to the intensity of sound. And this is that one definition that I said I snatched off of the minimal requirement question article from the Department of Biophysics and Cell Biology in the University of Edmonton. And, and uh, take a look at what it says. The energy carried by the sound wave perpendicularly through unit cross-section area per unit time. The unit of the sound intensity is watts over uh, meters squared. And, and when you think about it, this could either be denoted by J, and I've also seen it denoted by I. Either case, the intensity of sound, and if I take this whole, this whole, uh, I would say, um, kind of um, professional or rather uh, the specific depictional way of uh, explaining it, I would just say, let's just say that I have a sound wave. This is my sound wave here. And it comes across a uh, certain material. And this is basically, let's just say, this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. It comes across some sort of material here. Some sort of material here. The energy absorbed, or the energy that this, that this uh, ultrasound carries when it's, when it's uh, encountering this material at a 90 degree angle, or when it's carrying, uh, when it's uh, interacting with it perpendicularly, the energy absorbed here, or the energy carried here, let's just stick to the energy carried here because it's not necessary that the entire energy would be absorbed. So the energy carried here by this ultrasound coming in contact with this unit cross-section perpendicularly, all right, it's obviously it can be in different angles, it can be in uh, this angle, but that's not this angle, but that's not our definition. Our definition is this because this is how we can resolve for the entirety of energy that is carried. So this is, uh, this is the unit cross-section is this. Obviously the sound wave can be um, very, very large and we're only, let's just say that we're only wondering about this, this unit cross-section through a unit of time. And this is what we mean by intensity of sound. And we can resolve the intensity of sound with the following equation. Let's just say we're denoting it by uppercase J. Uh, and this, I believe, is the equation for it, whereas this is, the, uh, this is the acoustic impedance. And the change in the maximal, maximal pressure, this does not mean uh, density. This means pressure. I'm just going to put it down, pressure. And just by looking at this, the relationships here should be pretty clear. If, uh, if, if I have uh, a high pressure, a high maximal pressure, I'm going to have more energy carried by the sound wave, which makes sense. And if the acoustic impedance of the material, of this material that it's encountering, is higher, then the, uh, the energy carried is going to be lower because this uh, material is going to resist the energy uh, carried by the sound wave more. You can think about it like that. So this is the equation here. I do believe it's uh, somewhat represented in the uh, minimals article of the uh, of the department. So this is something to uh, to consider. As far as what I find important, I find important to understand uh, this to understand that um, to, that a sound wave propagates can come in contact with a material, and it can have some energy uh, associated with it. That the intensity of sound is basically this energy that is carried by the sound wave when coming in, in, uh, in contact or in interaction with this specific material at this 90 degree angle, which is optimal for carrying that energy. So this is, this is as far as uh, the intensity of sound. And we're just going to go through basic attenuations or absorptions of sound. And just like the absorption of x-ray, which uh, just a reminder, the resolution of absorption of x-ray was uh, was basically this, this function here. And for the attenuation of, uh, of uh, sound, it's basically the same, the same equation. And just, if, you, if you're not familiar with this equation, you can go through the, uh, the x-ray um, videos. But this is basically saying that if I want to resolve uh, the, um, how, much, how much of the ultrasound was absorbed or is, is, uh, is given to me at a certain point, all I need is to know how much I had to begin with what is the attenuation coefficient of the material that it is propagating through, and what distance it is. So if I'm firing an ultrasound at this, this material here, and I have 
less ultrasound coming out on the other end, you can say. This, let's just say I want to measure, want to measure it at this point. So this is my J here. And this is my initial intensity here. So this would be this. You can say initial intensity. I, I wouldn't really use that phrase, but you can say. And uh, this is the distance x here. So this is the distance x. And this, uh, this specific medium would have an absorption coefficient of, of mu. And this is how you can solve for it. Not, not super important. I wouldn't really, uh, I wouldn't really hang up on, on this formula, but it's just good to know. And what does absorption depend on? We're going to talk about scattering in a second, but what does what does absorption or attenuation depends on? It depends on the medium or the quality of the medium. You can say the quality quality of the medium, and it also depends on the frequency. And this is kind of kind of interesting because well, this this basically means this statement means that if I have different frequencies and the same medium, uh, the medium would absorb the ultrasound in a different way. And actually, the relationship is that when the frequency is higher, the absorption absorption is also higher. So if I use a high frequency uh, ultrasound, I know that it's going to be absorbed more. So this is an easy relationship to understand. You can think of it this way: if I use low frequency, I get low absorption. If I have if I use high frequency ultra, uh, ultrasound, I have high absorption. And this will come into play when we'll talk a little bit about the process of imaging with ultrasound. And this is basically the two things that we need to know, the two main things that affect the attenuation of ultrasound in tissues. So let's talk a little bit about scattering. And scattering is, is, is really simple. There's no real way to make it sound very scientific. If I have a sound wave here, and I know that I usually depict it like so, but let's just say this is a sound wave, and it gets to a specific and gets to a specific point in the medium. This is the specific point in the medium. Maybe some of it is going to go through, and some of it is just going to, to scatter in every way. Scatter in every way. And maybe the resultant vector of all of these guys is going to, to be in, in the same direction, but still you're going to have some of the, some of the sound wave, a uh, fraction of the sound wave going in every which way. And maybe some of the sound wave that went this way, let's just say these two vectors went this way, and they also interacted with uh, some tissue here, and then they got, they got uh, scattered again, only a very, to a very small extent because there's not a lot of ultrasound left, you can say. This, this you can say, this, this you can look at as uh, secondary scattering. Just so you'd understand if this is ever brought up, secondary scattering of ultrasound. And scattering is basically uh, the, um, the dispersion of ultrasound uh, in every which way while it is attenuated or absorbed or gone through a certain material. So this is basically what scattering is. And as far as attenuation, we have left to, dis to discuss very important two, uh, reflection and refraction. And um, this may also, you may have also encountered this reflection as echo. Maybe you've, you've encountered these two. These two, in ultrasound, these two are somewhat interchangeable. And we're going to cover these in the next video. Hopefully you found this helpful, and we'll see you on the uh, next video.